Hello, and today we're having a look at a couple of control surfaces uh, from Euphonics. Um, called the, it's called the MC Mix. Um, I think I've done a video previously with just one of these surfaces, but uh, I've got two today. I wanted to see how well they will work together. So effectively, we've got 16 tracks here. Although you can't quite see them all. I couldn't quite fit them on. It didn't make sense on this small screen size. Um, I'm starting to blabber. Let's flick over to FL Studio on my screen so I can see what I'm doing. And all I'm going to do is run through and show you the basics. Um, I'm not going to go into any kind of depth. Um, I like uh, I like to really all I care about, if I'm honest, with control surfaces is the basic functionality. I want to be able to change track volumes. I want to be able to change panning. I want to be able to solo tracks. I want to be able to mute tracks. I want to be able to um, bank up and down um, with tracks. I can do all that. All the other stuff is frills and I'm not too worried about it. Anyway, I'm starting to blabber as I say, so I'm going to start showing you um, this in, in working. Um, I can change as many faders as I have fingers available, fingers and thumbs. Um, I can also select tracks for the fader just by touching them. And what's nice is this is an option in the Euphonics uh, settings, which I can switch on and switch off as I go some people like this way of working other people like to select a track um, and have it stay on that track and still be able to change the volume on other tracks uh, so you can do that as well um, and if you're in the other mode you can select your track with these buttons here and uh, it pays your money and takes your choice it's just um, a different way of working um, okay so above the track selection we've got uh, record enable and just before I do that, I'm just going to check I've got all the tracks on, which I have. Um, I did do a version of this video early on and some of them are off. And it does give an unusual, doesn't give the right impression as to what's going on. So as I click this record select button, you'll see the colour of the fader in FL Studio changes to reflect that it's record enabled. Um, unless it's the selected track, in which case here we can see Let's select another track and we'll see that flip colour. So the selected track um, stays green. Was it green before? I don't know. Um, let's turn them off and see. Yeah, it just stays green. That's the colour scheme I've got in my FL Studio. So let's uh, switch these off. There's a couple up here as well. And you can also um, mute tracks. You'll notice here, that, I don't know if you can read this, but basically there's a green button which says on. And if I switch some of those off, you'll see they're getting disabled in FL Studio. Probably should have selected the first track down here first. Um, so I've disabled all those um, and I can switch them back on. And I can also uh, solo particular tracks. So that's the only track you're going to hear. You'll see that reflected in FL Studio there. Um, and if I click it again, I'm back to all my tracks. Um, I can bank up and down on tracks. So you'll see one by one there. And then back. And then oh, I can use these second set of buttons to bank eight tracks at a time. Um, now I've got these first eight tracks locked um, because I generally myself, I like to have these as my summation tracks. Um, so they're not a part of the banking process. Ordinarily they would be by default. Um, what else can I show you? Oh, the only other thing it's worth mentioning is uh, there is a mode here where you can you've got basically control um, of your door as well so you can play you can stop um, go back to the beginning you can rewind the track fast forward the track rewind the track and you've also got this thing called rtz which in fact flips between um, pattern mode and song mode um, and that's pretty much what i wanted to show you um, there's more scope here because all these other buttons are sending control messages to the door and it's just a question of having the script read them and decide what it wants to do. So um, oh, I'll tell you what I didn't show you is these here are touch enabled and you'll notice that you're getting the track number as you touch. If you start panning you'll see it's panning the track left and right. If you actually click the track it returns it to center and that's fairly standard functionality across uh, control services these days 
um, but it's nice to have two options there touch and click which do two different things um, it's just a bit unfortunate that uh, by default in the Mackie protocol when you touch these tracks it gives you the track number I would prefer it if the track numbers were there that's probably possible the scripting um, I haven't had a chance to really dive in and really um, do that with a script um, I did have to tweak the script a little bit um, from what I had before to make it work um, with multiple devices and I'm pretty sure it will work with up to four of these devices so up to 24 tracks but I've only been able to been up to 36 tracks I've only been able to test it with uh, two devices so 16 tracks in total um, anything else I should tell you uh, if you've enjoyed the video then give it a like <laughs> and if you want to see more videos like this then subscribe um, thanks very much for your time let's call it a day there we'll just switch around and grab my mouse and uh, turn off thanks very much bye bye